Hi, welcome. Today's video covers why magnesium is absolutely essential in perimenopause and menopause, and why I think it is the king of minerals that all of us middle-aged women should be taking. It is the fourth most abundant mineral in the body and is vital for hundreds of chemical reactions. Unfortunately, today's soil conditions mean that our food does not contain as much magnesium as it once did. And many of us are deficient. This can mean that your transition into menopause may be a lot harder than it needs to be. Upping your magnesium intake can benefit you in many, many ways. I'm going to go through several of those benefits. Then I'm going to discuss the different types of magnesium you have to choose from and the habits that may be robbing you of vital magnesium. The number one way magnesium can benefit you is by helping to balance your hormones. During perimenopause, estrogen dominance is a common occurrence, leading to some pretty uncomfortable symptoms. Magnesium is critical in the liver's detoxification process, which is how estrogen is broken down to be excreted through the bowel and kidneys. So making sure to get enough magnesium will help clear excess estrogen from your body and minimize all of those nasty symptoms associated with high estrogen, like fibroids and severe PMS. A major issue that absolutely tortures many women in midlife is anxiety. Magnesium is able to restrict stress hormones like cortisol and stop them from entering the brain, reducing anxious feelings, and binds to GABA receptors in the brain, stimulating them, resulting in relaxation. This all amounts to a dramatic reduction in anxiety. Nature's tranquilizer. Add to that magnesium's ability to maintain serotonin and dopamine in the brain, two essential neurotransmitters for mood and relaxation, and magnesium is an absolute powerhouse for helping you regulate your moods. I don't know about all of you, but my mood swings were getting right scary at times, and getting them under control was right at the top of my list beside anxiety and muscle cramps. The muscle twitching and cramping in my legs is so uncomfortable at times. And if I even dare to stop taking magnesium for any extended period, it can become absolutely unbearable. Tanking estrogen can interfere with the uptake and utilization of magnesium, which is absolutely vital for muscle relaxation and optimal muscle function, making cramping in perimenopause and menopause a real issue. If you're suffering with twitching, cramps, spasms, and tension, you need to focus on increasing your magnesium through diet and supplementation. If you are one of those unlucky ladies unable to sleep through the night, I'm here to tell you that magnesium holds benefit for insomniacs as well. Its relaxing effects on the brain and nervous system will do wonders for helping you drift off and sleep more soundly. Magnesium is also king when it comes to bone health. The flow of calcium in and out of the bones cannot be regulated without it. With bone density decreasing in menopause, if you want to maintain healthy bones and prevent osteoporosis, it's very important that you maintain optimal levels of magnesium. One extreme symptom every single woman wants a permanent cure for is heart palpitations. Absolutely terrifying and very common when hormones shift. Magnesium is very important for maintaining a healthy heartbeat. It's necessary for transporting other electrolytes like calcium and potassium into the cells. Deficiencies can lead to arrhythmias and heart palpitations. If you're suffering from this absolutely horrible symptom, getting your magnesium levels up is of paramount importance. What about blood pressure? Is your blood pressure climbing now that perimenopause has arrived? Guess what might help? Yep. Magnesium. It helps relax and dilate the blood vessels and can be a very effective way to help you bring down your blood pressure, especially with other lifestyle changes like avoidance of salt and caffeine. Blood sugar also climbs when hormones shift, and many women end up with a new diagnosis of prediabetes or diabetes in menopause or a worsening of their existing diabetes. Magnesium is necessary for proper glucose utilization and insulin signaling. Deficiencies can lead to insulin resistance. If your blood sugar is climbing, making sure that your levels of magnesium are optimal can help lower your blood sugar. 
I am sure that many of you know firsthand that low estrogen in menopause can lead to inflammation and pain. What you may not know is that magnesium can help. This mineral is an anti-inflammatory and can be very helpful in combating flare-ups that often occur in muscles and joints during perimenopause and menopause. Increasing your magnesium can be done through diet and supplementation. Obviously, getting your vitamins and minerals through food sources is the best choice. But as I mentioned earlier, our food doesn't contain the same amount of nutrients as it once did. So taking a supplement is smart. There are several different types of magnesium supplements to choose from. Magnesium citrate is a very popular form of magnesium and can easily be found at most stores. It's very bioavailable, but does have a laxative effect. So keep that in mind if you choose this type of magnesium and use it in smaller doses until you see how it affects you. Magnesium oxide is a popular form as well and is inexpensive, but it is not very well absorbed. So in my opinion, if you do have other options, choose a different type. Magnesium malate is said to be a great form of magnesium for those suffering widespread pain like fibromyalgia. It's highly absorbable and it is a good option for increasing levels. Magnesium glycinate is apparently great for sleep and inflammatory conditions and is very easily absorbed. It also has calming effects and is great for anxiety and stress. This one is my favorite type, even though it doesn't really help me with sleep. In fact, if I take it at night, it keeps me awake. Figures. Magnesium taurate is supposed to be good for regulating blood sugar and supporting healthy blood pressure. And magnesium chloride and sulfate are topical forms used in sprays, oils, and bath salts. There are several other forms, but they're not as widely known or used. Pair a supplement with high magnesium foods like dark chocolate, avocados, nuts and seeds, whole grains, and leafy greens, and do your best to try and avoid the five habits that tend to rob your body of magnesium. One, calm down on the sugar. It causes more magnesium to be excreted by the kidneys. Two, keep stress to a minimum. Even though I know it's very hard in this fast-paced society of ours, it causes an increase in cortisol and adrenaline and causes the cells to dump magnesium. Three, cool it on the caffeine. It causes more magnesium to be excreted in the urine and decreases the absorption of magnesium in the intestines. Four, drink alcohol in moderation. It will act as a diuretic and flush magnesium right out of your body. Five, don't smoke. It creates an abundance of free radicals and depletes vitamins and minerals in our bodies, magnesium included. Magnesium is one supplement that I absolutely will not do without. So many of us are deficient and it's making our midlife transitions so much worse. Perimenopause and menopause can be torture enough without adding to them. If you take any vitamins and minerals at all, please make sure magnesium is one of them. Take it with a small amount of calcium and vitamin D. The three of them work together and you do not want a huge imbalance between calcium and magnesium. That will only add to your problems. Ideally, the ratio should be two to one. So if you take 500 milligrams of calcium, you should be taking about 250 milligrams of magnesium. Let me know in the comments what type of magnesium you use and what it's helping you with. I could use some honest reviews. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe. I make videos on all things midlife. Thanks for watching. I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.